Hello everyone, welcome to this guide stroke s showcase for what I think <clears throat> is an underrated, well not underrated so much as underplayed um, scenario for Armour 3. It's called Pilgrimage and it was created by a brilliant mission creator called Raidige. Um I think him and Sumrak are probably the best I've ever come across. Um, really in depth. Um, especially this one. Um, well, with Sumrak's um, Shadow of Namalsk for Armour 2, the problem was Armour 2. It wasn't the mission. I played it for as long as I could until Armour 2, the AI wouldn't do, uh, my AI companion at that part of the mission wouldn't do what he was told. He wouldn't leave a building, he kept saying negative, unable to comply, and blah blah blah. Anyway, so this is Armour 3. Um, yeah, I know it's still Armour 3 AI, but it's not as bad as Armour 2. It's still bad, but it's not as bad. Anyway, um, I wanted to do a guide because I think a lot of people either don't get this or haven't really looked into it enough, um, read about it, and checked out its features because it's got so many cool features. It's always different. Um, every time I play this mission, it's never the same experience twice. It's a survival, it's like playing a survival mod, except for there isn't zombies, they're armed guys, and um, some of them might even have armed vehicles as well. And you've got an objective, which is to find the body of your brother who died on Altis when he was going in search of... Um, I don't want to give it away, um, but he, he was, anyway, he got killed while he was, he had found whatever it was and then he got killed and he managed to send you a message. Now, so you're playing as Alex, Alex Lascaris and you're going to find your brother Philip's body and it's going to be at a chapel. Now, on... Altis, there are 218 chapels altogether, I believe. Um, that isn't the. I think there's 197 on Altis, but it's been up to 218 by uh, Rydigia. I'm running one mod. This is by Rydigia because I wanted to show it as well because it was created for this mission. It's called uh, Rydigia, Rydigia's Incognito. Okay, so let's get on to it. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out before we even start. Now, you can see a lot of different versions I've got here. Now, this is the latest one, 1 1.95. Um, it's not available on Steam, but to be honest, I wouldn't recommend playing the Steam versions because there's a bug, and you can find that you can't resume a mission, um, which, as you can appreciate, is quite frustrating. So I'm going to play this one which is the non-Steam one. I'll put the link um, to the page where it's got all uh, the different versions, Born Home, Chinaris, Lingor, um, Chinaris again. Oh, I got, oh yeah, I got all the 1.95 ones for all the different, because I, I, I do want to try out Lingor at some point to see if it's got the old um, ambient sound stuff, because I, ling I love Lingor. Um, I loved it on Armour too. So, um, Right, let's get started. There, it starts off with a, um, a cutscene introduction, video introduction, so I'll, I'll bypass that. You can see that for yourself when you play it. Because you should play it, you really should. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this. And it'll go onto a map screen, which is really useful. Because you've got all this stuff, um, you've got it in game as well. But unfortunately, it's kind of too late. It it does tell you kind of um, what you need to know for setting the mission up. Um, but once you've set it up, it's set up. You've got access notebook tells you all about um, fuel fund, hideout strongholds, and various other stuff as well. Um, I don't think it's quite up to date because it hasn't got anything about um, it doesn't tell about um, a fuel fund decoy um, which we'll get into at some point uh, in this it's going to be a series um, so there's the map it's uh, Altis 
um, there are other versions as well um, and there's also co-op so you can play with a friend which is pretty cool um, okay so let's go on to the next screen which will be setting up the mission okay so this is your loot occurrence 100% um, is roughly one box for 25 houses as it says there in normal just distribution mode I've got it on abundant um, I usually have it on abundant 100% when I'm recording um, okay proper ammo with loot as well always um, so if you find a weapon you're gonna find the ammo because um, otherwise you'll be collecting a load of weapons in the hope that you find the ammo for them and you can't carry that much stuff if you're playing it on easy you start off with um, a basic uh, backpack and no vest uh, so just your inventory space and a small backpack um, it's enough to carry like um, an assault rifle or an SMG but not much bigger than that I'm sticking it at garrison's density at 100% and 75% for checkpoints density hidden camps density at 100% I don't normally have these set anywhere near that I usually have garrison's density at about 25% so garrison's density is basically the probability of when you go into a town of there being AI in that town now that could be one faction it could be two factions it could be three factions so they could be fighting it out if you've got ambient combat on um, we'll get to ambient combat in a minute uh, checkpoints are basically roadblocks that usually have between one and three um, uh, static um, weapons um, usually is it the 20 meter millimeter um, thing I can't remember what it's called um, so you've got three guys with, or one guy with a static thing a uh, gun so always if you don't see one don't go in you'll get wrecked um, until you've killed it um, it'll often have a vehicle it might be a strider or it might be an ifrit or if you're using mods it might be something else but if it's usually an ifrit or a strider actually I don't think I've ever seen it have a different vehicle when I've been running vehicle mods um, now it might have a gun on it it might have um, a grenade launcher on it or it might be just the strider or the ifrit without a gun just with a commander seat and the little periscope so I've got that set at 75 percent I normally have that at 25 um, so that that's the that's a probability thing as well um, so 100 percent that's going to be uh, around 70 groups hidden camps density I've got that set at um, 100 I usually set it at 50 um, linked with that is uh, where is it um, I have multiple hideouts on because hidden camps basically what they are is they're AI camps so they'll have a fire they'll have two tents uh, a big um, crate that you can store stuff in and a small small crate next to it that you can sell stuff from um, a gas cooker um, things like that so they will be between say two and four um, AI at each camp so if you kill the AI then you can take the camp and it will become a hideout and you can um, you can fast travel to it from anywhere else on the map for free but you can't be in combat at the time or you can't be in um, uh, um, a hostile area like one of the red circles I think um, you can't like you can't just bug out of a battle and go back to your hideout. Now, if you get injured, um, you can only fully heal at a hideout. You can use med packs um, or health kits, or whatever they're called, but they don't fully heal you. So aiming is really awkward. Um, you'll find just your guy moaning and the the weapon swaying all over the place, even if you've been sitting there for five minutes. Um, Population density, I always have that at 10, at 10, so that's 10 civilians per 600 meters. 
because I don't want them all, to, all clumped together. Because say I want to use, say I've got some tripwire mines or something, and I want to set up a trap for AI. Well, I don't want the civilians getting in the way, and they will do. So you have got the option also to have them disabled. Now that can be quite useful. Um, instead of seeing civilians, you might see a laptop in a in a building, or you might see um, a mobile phone, or um, a camcorder, or a notepad. And I don't mean a I mean a like a you know that you write in, not that you uh, not an iPad, notepad thing, or IBM or whatever. Um, and these you can get. Um, possible circle intel, which means basically information about uh, your brother's, your bro the possible location of your brother's body. It won't give you an actual location. It might say you can knock um, these um, churches off the map, and then it will put red X's or red circles around each of the ones you don't have to visit. If you've got civilians on, they might actually ask you to do something for them, either to um, kill a warlord or to um, rescue a POW from a stronghold um, or a military area um, and then they'll give you they might they might give you um, information that knocks off a load of churches like say I don't know 10 or something or or it might be it says I know that your body's within this area and then you'll get a big red circle on the map and then you know you can discount the rest of the map so you you've you know you zeroed in quite a bit so it's quite useful so it's kind of swings and roundabouts really because I don't know if you actually get given missions if you have them disabled so I tend to have them on I'm gonna have companion off because I want to show you something um, if you have a companion on, it's basically an AI companion. Um, if you're playing co-op, it will be your fr the person you're playing with. I always have artillery off because if you've got artillery on, because um, it's a you know it's a single player mission, unless you're playing co-op, and you just get wrecked because <laughs> you know they have mortars and um, whatnot. I mean, there's already going to be tanks anyway. Okay. Um, search and destroy, air search and destroy range um, I always have this on short which means 1500 meters now what this means is say I engage a group of AI and one of them manages to get a radio signal off saying there's a hostile and then gives your um, um, grid coordinates if you're within 1500 meters of a helicopter uh, an attack chopper that is a gunship um, that helicopter will come looking for you, or it might be a tank. No, no, actually, they can. Yeah, they can call in a tank as well if there's one nearby. Um, so if you have it to very long, that's 12, 12 kilometers. So I'd recommend either having it off or having it on shore. It's up to you. Um, okay, ambient combat. Now this is where things get interesting because it's a little bit. Um, this is different from garrison's density. Garrison's density is to do with towns. These do not spawn in towns. Um, they spawn around you and basically you don't see them spawn around you. Um, basically you'll come over a hill and you'll, hit, you'll, you'll be hearing gun, distant gunfire or something. So basically the backstory of this mission is that um, there's been um, some kind of Political chaos on the island. There's no, um, there's no government. Um, it's, it's turned into civil war. So you've got factions fighting against each other. The one thing these factions who are fighting each other have got in common: they will kill you if they spot you, or try and kill you if they spot you. So they're all hostile to you, and they're hostile to each other. So, um, so if you have it on L. Which is limited. It's limited. It's a limited amount to your um, of spawns per given area. So um, it won't be a huge group, um, but there's a high probability. So that's your probability, and that's the size of the group. Okay. So if you have it on just high, it's not limited 
to um, how many can spawn. So it could be up to, I think it's 100 and, no, it might be, I can't remember what the number is. I'll show you in a minute when we get into the uh, thing. Okay, difficulty, I'm saying on easy for now. Normally I play it on normal. Um, don't know, I haven't clicked it now. Because um, it tells you what yours. If you start on easy, you start off with um, a Mark 20 or something, a backpack, a vest, night visions, all the gear. Um, so all you need to do is upgrade your weapon, really. Um, whereas if you start on normal, you start off with an SMG. It might be a, a PDW 2000, or it might be. Um, um, damn, I can't remember what the guns are called. The stupid Armor Three names. Um, it might be the 0.45 uh, vector, um, whatever it calls it in this, the vermin, vermin, or whatever, vermin, or it might be the. Um, there's another PDW. It's not the PDW 2000 though. Um, but anyway, it's an SMG. Uh, I'm going to start on easy because basically I'm just trying to. This is a guide. Um, I always have multiple hideouts on because that means um, we got. When you take a camp, you can, as I said, you, you can fast travel to it, you can heal, you can pass time if you want as well. Um, actually, you can pass time without going to one. But if you want to heal properly, and you can store stuff, which is the important thing. Well, two important things. You can heal completely, and you can store stuff. Um, you need a med kit, and it takes six hours to heal. Um, so it'll go forward six hours in time. So. I like to have multiple hideouts because that means I can, as many as I can take, I can then I can fast travel between them for free, because you can hitchhike in this game, um, or this this mission I should say, and that means um, like if you're on a road and you're not in combat and you're not within a certain distance of tr enemy troops, you can fast travel, um, which is hitchhiking, and it costs you. It's, I think it's 10 fuel fund, which is the currency in this mission, per meter, or one, or it might be one fuel fund per meter, so you've got to bear in mind how much you've got, but you sell stuff, um, all the loot you find, which I've got on 100% abundant, and I've done that, haven't I? Um, so when you hitchhike, you need to bear in mind how much money you've got. and when you look at the map when you actually choose hitchhiking the map comes up to ask you wait and you've got to hitchhike to another road you can't hitchhike into the middle of nowhere so it's got to be on a road from one road to another road or even up the same road but on from road to road um, but it will show you a, a, a blacked out kind of circle that shows you the maximum range of that of the um, the amount of money you've got to how far you can go, so you'll you'll see that. Um, I always have my circuit intelligence on average. I'm going to stick it on frequent because, for you know, this is a um, this is a guide after all. So I want to show you as much as I can because um, I'm doing a, I'm currently doing a long play series on my other channel, my TGG long plays um, channel, which has got no commentary. It's just gameplay, and it's been pretty exciting so far. Um, bodies, uh, marked bodies, this is dead bodies. Um, so you can either have spotted own kills, none or random. I usually have mine on spotted, so basically if you're looking in the right direction, you'll see on the map you'll see little crosses, little kind of grey black crosses, and it's quite good because when you kill, when you shoot someone, you can check if they're dead on the map because you'll see a cross. Um, I always have 3D icons for all so that'll be for um, civilians who have got um, uh, information, possible information, potential information. So you'll see a blue exclamation mark above the building or above their heads because uh, they might be walking around. Um, and if there's loot in the building, you'll see a kind of yellowy brown exclamation mark above the building. You can have them switched off, so you have no loot, no icons at all. You can have less loot icons, or you can have comments only. Um, I, I just tend to have it on all. Um, right, phone and ACM. I would uh, ADM, sorry. So ADM is Intel offers that come in via 
um, side chat. So there's two types. There's one is hostile presence, um, which costs I think it's 600 fuel fund, and then it gives you it puts a red ha hashed circle on the map, showing you where the, all the hostile areas are for each one you pay for. Phone calls I have them switched off because I find them irritating. Um, I just don't think they're particularly well written. They're not really germane to the plot, um, and they're a little bit. Um, I don't think Roy DJ wrote the, the the narrative bits for those himself. I think it's someone else, and I don't think they did a very good job of it. They're kind of a little bit. Um, oh, I think I'm funny, and I want to show you I'm funny, but no, you're not funny. Um, so they're kind of irritating, and they don't make a lot of sense. Some of them. Um, I always start at dawn. Uh, you can start at noon, sunset, or midnight, or random. Um, bear in mind, if you're starting on normal, you don't have any ra any night visions uh, on easy. You do. Um, but I'm going to start on dawn. I always start on dawn. I always start on unknown because I like to have the surprise. But even if you don't, even if you spawn at the same place every time, even if you say south or north or something, um, it's still going to be different. Um, I leave that as it is. Right, so that's it for this video. Going through the settings in the next video, we'll talk about, we'll actually be into the mission, into the scenario, and um, going on from there. So, see you in a minute. Oh, well, <laughs> as I see you in a minute, what I mean is I'm going to carry on recording, but that's the end of this video, so I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now.